All right, what is up, guys? I am doing a voiceover because my dumbass forgot to bring the mics to the gym. So I have to do a voiceover now because I forgot them. Anyways, today was a plyo day for me. Isaiah just did a feel good lift, so his is super basic. Um, you know, he basically just did squats. I think he did calf raises, seated, hip thrusts. I don't even know if he did hip thrust actually, and I think he did something for his uh, something for his hamstring, but I don't remember again what it was. Um, anyways, I warmed up with some slow squats, which I didn't include in this video, and then I got into some uh, single leg drops. I did double leg drops before this, so you guys probably saw that. And I actually accumulated throughout this entire session um, 70 plus, like 70, 71, at least when I counted, plyo contact. So I'm talking like reactive jumps at at least 80% plus. <clears throat> now, definitely the last like three to four sets were at 100%. No doubt I was trying as hard as I possibly could during that. You guys will see as I kind of tone it up. Um, I actually measured my uh, RSI during the session and it was pretty deflated or pretty depressed which I would expect, like I think even a month ago I said I would expect that my RSI would drop quite a bit um, during, or my jumping would drop quite a bit during these uh, stretch shortening cycle February as I'm calling it. And that's exactly what happened. So I'm not really too surprised because you're fatiguing the exact systems that you're, you're training. Oh, sorry, you're like, when I'm, measuring this this sort of stuff i'm fatiguing the exact mechanisms that would give me high outputs during this stuff so it doesn't necessarily matter if you're if you're hitting like peak peak rsi what i care about is am i getting better am i improving uh through progressive overload am i improving through trying to have higher motor outputs um, now some people would say oh well you you can't get better because you're you're not necessarily you know, achieving threshold stimulus for your for your motor units and motor recruitment. So, well, you know, my response is, well, then what would you do? Just nothing. Well, you're gonna not jump at all. You're gonna not overload it at all. Um, so I'd rather hit it hard, make sure I actually have a legitimate emphasis the entire month, then potentially not hit it hard, not have an emphasis the entire month, and then obviously not improve. So the goal of the whole month is to overload that stimulus. And that is why um, I was, you know, kind of pushing through a shitty session, I would say, for lack of a better word. You know, it's the same reason why you don't cut jump sessions when you're not jumping well. You still need to get the jump volume. You know, you're not, most of your sessions are not gonna be at 100%. <clears throat> so, I got into these, I started with a really low box. You guys can see here, I was um, probably, I don't even know what this is like. It looks like a one 12 inch box. And just trying to get like some semblance of, uh, you know, a reactive jump off the ground. My knees were feeling a little bit sore, specifically my right knee. My left knee actually is pretty good. But when I do a lot of East Bays and, uh, and I think like bounding maybe the other day, you know, obviously you're doing right foot single leg contacts uh my right knee can get you know a little bit provocative but i usually don't care because it's my non-dominant leg it's my non-jumping leg but anyways here i was still warming up so I, I moved up a box and uh these did not feel good i'm gonna be honest with you and this maybe goes into another point which is you don't have to feel 100%, 100% of the time. You know, I get a lot of questions from guys, oh, well, you know, my, my back is starting to feel something. I'm starting to feel something in my knee. I'm starting to feel something in my ankle. I'm starting to feel something here, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's okay to be a little bit uncomfortable, to have a little bit of soreness. That's not gonna limit you um, from producing a lot of force or doing your sport really well. And so even on these jumps, you know, where I really, I put the box there as a, as an, in a point of reference and kind of something to target, um, you know, my RSI jumped up like a whole point, you know, the early ones I was like at one and a half, two, and just warming up and then it almost shot up to probably close to three on this if I were to, to measure it and have a landing. So as I got into it, my knees didn't necessarily warm up. They didn't necessarily feel better, but I'm okay with that because one, I'm gonna do slow squats tomorrow and I know how to manage my knee pain if I do a flare up. Two, it was a little bit of a testing period to see, you know, how far can I push into pain and still be able to potentially jump 
uh, you know, over the weekend or if I do ISOs or stay on top of the, the slow strength work or heavy slow resistance training, stuff that we know helps tendons recover really quickly. Um, I expect my knee to be, you know, partially flared up tomorrow or even maybe, you know, two days from now, maybe even into, into Saturday. Like I said, that's okay. I'm not worried about that. Uh, you know, I wanted the stimulus. I made an active choice to push through that. I knew it could set me back a little bit, but I have a plan in place and I wanted to get this stimulus. So you, you can make those judgment calls sometimes. Um, I took the box out here to actually test my RSI, but anyways, yeah, you can make those judgment calls sometimes and decide to push through pain if you kind of understand how to not come back from that, but you understand how to, how to manage it. And so, you know, I'm very confident in my abilities as a coach. I'm not too worried about, uh, my pain levels or anything else. So I can do that. Now for you guys, you're probably like, well, how does this apply to me? You know, or, or as your athlete, how does this apply to me? If it's less than like, if during it, it hurts quite a bit, wait until the next day before you ask me anything. Right. And if the next day it's over a four or five, when you're like walking downstairs, then I would be a little bit concerned. Okay. Anyways, I got into hurdle hops here. Um, these again, did not feel great but I was getting really, really good contacts here. Uh, I, I didn't look at the RSI on these, but it looks like it's around 27, which for me is pretty standard. I think the highest I've ever hit is 3.3 three, maybe, 3.4. Um, there was a time when I hit like four, but it might've be, might been measured a little bit differently. Um, I think this girl almost falls over here. It was kind of funny. Yep, she like, <laughs> it was kind of funny. Anyways, so I did four to five sets of these, I think I did 20 depth jumps, or no, 30 depth jumps, and I did 40 of these, so it was like four sets of 10-ish, or five sets of eight, or something like that. Um, you guys can count if you want, but yeah, there's pretty much the full session for you guys. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be doing a feel-good lift, like I said, so I will talk to you guys then. Um, as always, make sure you go to thpstrength.com and sign up for coaching if you do want to get more athletic, get more explosive, and get healthier along the way. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you later.